Well, let us first enlist all the principal value branches of the inverse trigonometric functions. Sin inverse x has minus 1 to plus 1 moving towards minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2. Then cos inverse x has minus 1 comma plus 1 moving towards 0 comma pi. Tan inverse x has capital R, of course we can write it as minus infinity to plus infinity as well, minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2. Cot inverse x has capital R to 0 comma pi open interval. Second inverse x is going from capital R minus minus 1 comma plus 1 open interval because in the second minus 1 and plus 1 do not turn up, uh, tends to 0 comma pi closed interval minus pi by 2 because at pi by 2 secant is 0 because cos is 0 at pi by 2 then secant does not exist. Cosecant inverse x is also going from minus r minus minus 1 comma plus 1 moving towards minus pi by 2 comma plus pi by 2 minus 0 because sin is 0 is zero, sin, sin is 0 at 0 therefore cosecant is going to be infinity hence that value has to be deleted from the interval itself these are all what we call as principal value branches these principal value branches we will now be using in identifying the principal value branches of the functions which we are going to solve now under exercise 2.1 Let us take a small problem sin inverse minus half. Remember all inverse trigonometric functions, inverse trigonometric functions, all inverse trigonometric functions are at large angles. So, this sin inverse minus half should also be an angle. So, we will start with that particular definition that it is being an angle let sin inverse half minus half be theta. Then sin inverse is jumped to that you get minus half is equal to sin theta. Now, sin theta is equal to minus half I can write minus sin pi by 6. Since since sin is sin theta is an odd function, we write sin of minus theta as minus sin theta as well. So, applying this rule here in this picture, you get sin theta is equal to sin minus pi by 6 resulting again taking sin inverse on both sides, sin inverse of sin theta is equal to sin inverse of sin pi by 6 results theta is equal to pi by 6. Here the rule that is applied here is f inverse circle f is equal to f inverse x f inverse circle f of x is equal to x that is for every x belongs to domain the of the function. So, theta is equal to pi by 6 implies sin inverse sorry minus pi by 6 extremely sorry for that minus pi by 6 uh, it is minus pi by 6 it is uh, sin inverse minus half is equal to minus pi by 6. It is quadrant 4 angle. You can see even the same in the quadrant system as well. This is pi by 6 and this is going to be in the clockwise direction minus pi by 6. This is the fourth quadrant, first quadrant, second and of course, this is the third quadrant. We know that sin is negative in the fourth quadrant that is why you got negative angle. We have done already a problem now I will be taking one more problem for you to make you understand further how to identify the principal value branch. Say for example, you have got cot inverse minus root 3 is a value whose principal value branch and principal value you have to identify. That means how to identify as I told you already that inverse trigonometric functions are always angles. So, you start with let cot inverse minus uh, cot inverse minus root 3 is equal to theta then minus root 3 is equal to cot theta. Now, minus root 3 is equal to cot theta what I am going to do is that cot theta is equal to minus root 3 cot is negative in which quadrant the cot is negative the second and the fourth in these two quadrants cot is always negative. 
So, when cot is negative in these two directions, as far as that the quadrants are concerned, this quadrant comes earlier to the quadrant 4. So, what I suggest is that you take a reference angle of quadrant 2 and write it in the form of cot theta is equal to minus cot pi by 6, which of course, we can write as cot what it is going to be pi minus pi by 6, pi minus pi by 6 is equal to going to be cot phi pi by 6. You might get a doubt here. So, why you have taken cot pi minus pi by 6? Here in the second quadrant you have pi minus theta and of course, pi by 2 plus theta as well. But you cannot take pi by 2 because pi by 2 brings a change in the function. You are not supposed to take an allyl angle which will bring a change in the cot function itself. So, you need to take a reference angle, the second one which will never endorse a change in the cot function. So, I have taken the second one instead of the first one. So, therefore, I have got cot pi by 6. So, cot theta is equal to cot phi pi by 6 which implies cot inverse of cot theta is equal to cot inverse cot phi pi by 6 which implies theta is equal to phi pi by 6 thus theta is cot inverse minus root 3 is equal to phi pi by 6 that belongs to 0 comma pi because this you can see it is 150 degrees belongs to 0 comma 180 degrees. Therefore, this particular value is called principal value and this is the principal value branch. So, we found a principal value within the principal value branch of the cot inverse hence this is the answer for the problem. The problem is find the value of tan inverse 1 plus cos inverse minus half plus sin inverse minus half is the question. Well, dear children as far as this problem is concerned, we can straight away do this one in two different methods. I will first explain you the normal method uh, using principal values. Then again, I will use the formula to make you understand what exactly we are going to study in the future. So, here if you take tan inverse 1, say it is theta because I told you already inverse trigonometry functions are all angles. So, 1 is equal to tan theta, then of course, you can write tan theta is equal to tan pi by 4. The 4 is falling very much in the principal value branch of the trigonometric function, inverse trigonometric functions tan inverse that is minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2 open interval. So, one value we have got it. Let us take cos inverse minus half. Since I said already inverse trigonometric functions are angles, it is theta, uh, sorry phi, then cos phi is equal to minus half. Now, let us look at the chart is the first quadrant, second quadrant, third and fourth. In which quadrant the cos A is negative, F second and third. In the second you have pi by 2 plus theta and pi minus theta. In the sec third angle you have pi plus theta and two, 3 pi by 2 minus theta. Now, when you travel from first quadrant, the very first thing immediate neighborhood is that you have second quadrant. So, I would be better using the second quadrant allied angles. Now, of the allied angles, which one is the appropriate? The pi minus theta is a, a, a appropriate allied angle mainly for the reason pi will never bring a change in the cos function. We, we, we require that. So, what I am going to do? Cos phi is equal to minus cos pi by 3 that is cos 60 is my uh, the half. So, now I write it is cos phi is equal to cos pi minus pi by 3. Why? The rule says that cos pi minus theta is minus cos theta in the second quadrant. That is resulting cos phi is equal to cos 2 pi by 3. Thus, phi is equal to 2 pi by 3 which belongs to very much the open the closed interval 0 comma pi. This is the principal value, it belongs to principal value branch of the cos inverse. We have got this value is 120 degrees which falls well within the 0 and 180. Let us start with the last and final one, sin inverse minus half. Sin inverse minus half is equal to say you take one xi. Now, it is uh, uh, sin xi is equal to minus half. 
sin e is negative in third and fourth quadrant when you travel in the clockwise direction fourth quadrant first the very first the immediate neighborhood for the cephas quadrant therefore you better write this as minus sin pi by 6 and write it as sin minus pi by 6 of course you have one more rule sin is odd function please remember sin minus theta is equal to minus sin theta as and when i observe this structure with the sign then immediate facilitation that i have to do is that i have to write this as a sign of minus theta so i have written as this one so xi is equal to minus pi by 6 which falls well within minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2. Now, I have got all the three values that is theta value I have got, phi value I have got and xi. Since I have assumed this is theta, this is uh, phi and this is xi, then I add all this. Therefore, required value is equal to theta plus phi plus xi. Then theta is pi by 4 plus phi is 2 pi by 3 plus uh, sorry minus pi by 6 it is 120 minus 30 is going to be definitely 90 degrees so it is pi by 4 plus pi by 2 it is 90 plus 90 plus 45 is 135 that is 3 pi by 4 which of course you can write as 135 degrees as well so this is the required value well dear children now let us consider the entire expression as some value called v. Now what I will take is tan inverse 1 you keep as it is, but this particular function which you are finding here, you write it as cos inverse minus half plus sin inverse minus the half. In the previous example if you see this part when clubbed that is phi plus xi you got pi by 2. It is exactly without any calculation you can write this entire thing as pi by 2 that is tan inverse 1 plus pi by 2. You might you might think that how is it? It is very simple to understand. It is simple to understand this is going to be the formula of cos inverse theta plus sin inverse theta is equal to pi by 2 a formula that you are going to come across now. You are, you are yet to reach the formula portion. So, I will be introducing now formulas uh, later. Now, cos inverse theta plus sin inverse theta is equal to pi by 2. It is a formula that you are going to come across in future. So, now using this formula here itself, what is the advantage? You have reduced the second and third portion of finding out phi and xi and applying directly the formula. Now, I shall be doing the same thing for this, taking it as pi by 4. Pi by 4 plus pi by 2 is resulting as 3 pi by 4, which is of course 135 degrees, which falls in the range, uh, which falls, uh, this is called principal value of the entire expression v. So, this is the end of the session. Let us first recap what we have learnt. First point we have learnt was all trigonometric functions are not invertible because of their domain existing. We have to reduce domains of all trig functions to make them 1 to 1 and on to. Once we have made, we have got the definitions for sin inverse x, cos inverse x, tan inverse x etc as min, uh, minus 1 comma plus 1 going to minus pi by 2 comma plus pi by 2 and so on so forth. Third one is we have understood that sin inverse x is not equal to 1 by sin x. It does not follow does not follow standard algebraic rule algebraic rule a inverse is equal to 1 by a. Please remember this fact. La fifth point, all inverse trigonometric functions are, are 
angles. It means when you solve any inverse trigonometric function, any inverse trigonometric uh, expression, you are going to get angles. If you get angles, then your answer is right. If you are not getting angles, your answer is wrong. So far, what we have understood was how to find out principal value branches. In the coming lesson, coming lesson, what you are going to study, I give you a small glimpse of that. Number one, formulae, formulae of inverse trigonometric functions. Second, using formulas, using formulas, simplifying, simplifying inverse trigonometric functions. Third and final, solving inverse trigonometric functions. These are the three topics we are going to cover in the next session. Thank you very much.